Hey everyone, I'm back with another video. This is my friend Corbin. Hello. And we're going to talk about weight loss, weight problems that we both experienced, and boyfriends, and that, you know, loving ourselves has all brought us. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> all the good stuff. <laughs> so I guess we'll start with weight. Um, now, we kind of differ in that because you said you were kind of always a little heavier your whole life. Yeah, I've been chunky my whole life. Yeah, and I was a size two in high school, and I gained weight through um, taking anxiety pills that a professional doctor, he really was, but he was a crappy one, so, <laughs> <laughs> that a doctor prescribed me, and it made me gain like 60 pounds over winter, and ever since then, I've kind of just struggled with... Mm you know, gaining weight or losing weight for that matter, really. Um, it's hard to take it, it off. It's hard to it's take hard it off. To keep it. I think that a lot of people have a lot of problems with self-loathing, especially if they gain weight or even if they've just been heavy their whole lives. Mm -hmm. That's something we both had in common. I think at one point we definitely, like, were not happy with ourselves. Oh, yeah. And um, it wasn't just our boyfriends that, like, helped, I think. Like, I started loving myself because I felt comfortable in my body. And But, you know, being loved by somebody who loves you for you definitely does help. And, yeah. It, it really definitely does. helps. It helps. Support. It's support. Yeah, it's the kind of support that you don't get everywhere, especially nowadays. Everyone's all mean on the internet. You know, they'll you sit people. there and body shame you. <laughs> <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> well, maybe just some of you. You know, just you know. A lot 90, of you are really cool. I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. Two percent of you are cool. Yeah. Just, I don't know. Hmm. As far as like weight loss, we're both kind of trying to lose weight right now, and yeah. we're. I mean, mine's primarily for my health. I do feel good um, for the most part. I feel unbalanced. Like, that's one thing I noticed when I was thinner was that um, I was more balanced naturally. Mm -hmm. And gaining weight kind of throws off your balance. Like, when I horseback ride or barrel race mm -hmm. or even just, like, walking or running, you just have, um, you, you don't have all that resistance weighing you down, I guess. <laughs> oh, you're talking about actual balance. I'm thinking of, you know, chakras no, and stuff no, like no, that. No, I think of that, too. Like, I think of, like, balance, like, when, like, if you sway this way or that way, it's like, yeah. you feel it more. It's like... Just think of how perfectly an hourglass just sits on a table. Yes, thank you. Oh my god, yeah. that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it just stands there, and it's all beautiful while the sand goes down. It's just like, look at me, I'm gorgeous, and you love my shape. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you shook the table, the hourglass might move a little bit, but it'll still stay upright. Precisely. Where, whereas if you put a ball on the table... <laughs> <laughs> not saying that we're a ball. We're not, we're not a ball. <laughs> whereas... I want to talk to you about like what you do because I feel like you do a better job than me of losing weight or even just being healthier. She before she broke her foot, <laughs> recovering, recovering, <laughs> recovering from a broken foot. Before she broke her foot, um, she was a beast. <laughs> <laughs> she was um, oh, at you the were, gym every day. You were your gym rat, gym rat. Mm, I don't like to brag, but <laughs> no, but, but I'm bragging. <laughs> No, she was just always working out, and she's really careful about what she eats. She's trying to pull me in on that, and I appreciate that because I definitely need more support. No, but real talk, like, what have you done? Tell the beautiful people on YouTube. Um, well, it's mostly just increasing weight, going to the gym every day. I go for probably about two hours. Um, listen to your body when it tells you it needs rest, like if it's really sore. Um, like it, today. Yeah. Because I've been working all week and we're setting up a store and we're lifting boxes. Yeah, she's got it. has been a good exercise though. I've lost weight. Ooh, good. I have lost weight, right? Yeah. Well, you, yeah. Even you said I like look thinner. Yes, you do. Thank you. She looks thinner, guys. Thank you. So, yeah, it's just increasing weight, knowing your limits, and something that I never really did but I'm going to start doing once I can run again is do more cardio. Because something that I found out is after you pass um, 20 minutes of consistent cardio, you start tapping into your fat reserves. So I think if you start doing at least 30 minutes of cardio a day, you should be on the fast track to losing yeah. fat. So imagine if you guys like walked for an hour. Yeah, that, yeah, even that, that works. That would work too. Yeah, that's better than nothing, you yeah. know. Go for a hike. Go for a bike ride. Swim. Oh my God, swim. Swimming. Summer oh, when I was, guys. When I was on the swim queue in high school, I mean, I was already thin, but I just, I really did slim down. And I was, it was mm -hmm. just really good. And you're using all the resistance. You're using all of your muscles and it pushes you through. You know, muscles that you didn't even know you had. It is a struggle, you know? And a lot of people judge and say that, you know, like, oh, fat people, they must not be trying hard. They must be so lazy. This girl is the least lazy person I know. She is working her ass off every single day. <laughs> Literally. No, she works her butt off and 
you know, I, I don't really know anybody who works harder than you. Like, if there's, like, thinner people out there that I do not go to the gym like you do. You work so hard. Okay, and she's try. recording her calories on her app and everything like that. She's, like, she's really keeping track. You're really, like, it. you make it a full-time job. Yes, it has to be a full-time job. It's, it's not 50% diet, 50% exercise. It's not 90% exercise, 10% diet. It's 100% everything. 100% of the time. You have to be dedicated. You have to be really dedicated. You can't have cheat days, though. Cheat days are nice. And, you know, and like, see. people look at us, and like, well, especially you. Like, you work all the time or whatever, and they may not see, like, a size 2 person. No. But you are very healthy. Oh, thank you. You are. You're very healthy. Aside from those brownies you brought today, you're very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but she's really good. I'm really bad. Um, I'm kind of part-time, and I'm kind of working my way up because... I feel like you kind of shock yourself. I think a lot of people shock themselves when they do it right away. Yes, it's like when you go when you go when you go hard turkey, when you go hardcore tr- cold turkey. Right away, I think it's kind of hard. Like I'm kind of wean myself off of things, and I definitely do better with that. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it just really depends on what, though. See, I I, I, I cut so a cold turkey. Oh, I did too. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm glad I did though, because soda's really really bad for you. Yeah, and you don't need it. It's it doesn't no. provide any nutrients for you. It's just carbonated sugar. No, I'm kind of part-time. I work a lot lately, um, and it's been very physically demanding, so I feel like I've been getting a lot of workout from that. I do try to come home and do a little bit, but I haven't really been doing much. I try to definitely um, eat healthier, and I think it's been working for me. I'm the kind of person, though, that if I exercise more, it's going to show, even if I'm a little bit bad with my food, but for the most part, I do have to, like she said, 100% both. Mm -hmm. Um, Otherwise, it doesn't work, because I've lost weight before. I've lost 30 pounds, and um, I was working like ass off and I just said no to any sweets and Mm -hmm. I was really careful what I ate I cut out some beef and a little with a little bit I still ate my beef but (laughs) you can't you can't you can't say no to beef I need my my red meat you need to cycle your carbs what you need to do is like you can have a, a, a high carb day and you can have your carb deficit days and what like well, I don't know. You can go You can go regular carb, you know, just kind of take it easy. Don't overdo it for a few days. And then you have a carb deficit day, which is when you just chill out. Like, don't eat any bread, don't eat any gluten, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Just to kind of shock your body that's and it tricks it. That's actually what we did on Swim Team. Um, he said, this week, eat your carbs because we are going to cut it out and you have to say goodbye. <laughs> so... So yeah, and, you, and, you, and you feel such a difference in your body. I mean, that was the cool thing about, like, my swim team. My coach was, like, very, like, nutrition conscious. Like and it was really cool. Yeah, no, I was really healthy when I did swim, so it was good. See, um, I grew up eating all kinds of, like, like biscuits and gravy, butter, bacon, Oh, don't get me wrong. Oil. I'm Portuguese. We ate a lot of uh, well, yeah. oil and fat. And, oh, yeah. yeah. I oh, yeah. It. Like, so that's something that, and that's something else we have in common. We eat very, very fattening foods our whole life, I'm mm-hmm. sure. Oh, and it's like a shock when you change your diet, especially oh. if you're not willing to. I feel like, you know, if, if you're happy with how you're doing things, I mean, I, I'm not giving up bacon. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who are we to push you? We're not, like, sitting here being like, oh, we are so thin and healthy and look at the results here. Yeah. We're just being, like, real. This is, like, how we are right now and this is, like, we're working on it. We are working on being thin. There's nothing wrong with being fat. So there's a lot of people that are very healthy, like you. Like, you're a little heavier. Like, I think you're thinner than me, though. But you're a little heavier than some people, you're not. A, you're not I'm a size two than average. You're not a size two to six, but you no. are. But you're healthy, and you take care of your body. Like you're way less. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Well, see, another thing is like don't rely on the number on the scale because the number on the scale tricks you because there's fat and then there's muscle, and I would get my I would make myself depressed when I noticed the number on the scale wasn't changing, when I just realized I was getting stronger. I kept lifting more weight. And then I would look at the scale. I'm like, wait a minute, but I've been I've been kicking ass in the gym. How come this isn't working? And then it came to my attention that hello, fat's melting. You're replacing it with muscle. Look at how your clothes fit. Look at your measurements oh, and yeah. just how you feel. She was giving me that talk today and yesterday. Like, look at how your clothes fit, and it really does help because mm-hmm. I've been fluctuating a little bit, but I have been working pretty hard. I mean, and there's water I'm, weight. Yeah, water weight. I mean, I'm not doing all I can do. I'll be honest. Like, I do need to work harder, but I. You know, like I, I said, I'm doing baby steps because sometimes you just have to do baby steps. Yeah. Doing it all at once. I get shin splints and stuff. That's like a legitimate issue. Mm-hmm. And so I can't go out running every day. I mean, I could and I could get uh, fit, but if I didn't have my, if I didn't have shin splints, but since I do, I have to be careful and I can't do that right off the bat. Not when I'm heavy. When I lose more weight, I can yeah. push myself harder, but until then I have to do baby steps. 
I think and swimming and horseback riding would be perfect. Oh for yeah, you. anything that's like low impact. I feel like biking too. Um, I want I want to yes. I want to get an exercise bike because you're not putting impact on your legs in that kind of way. It's kind of hard to talk about these things because so many people will get offended if we're promoting you know being fat and healthy or if we're promoting we're getting skinny. There's going to be hate, and well, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to say. Like it's a walking a fine line. Well, to me, I feel like it, it, there's a huge difference between loving yourself for who you are and how you feel in your body and body shaming. Because there's people who fat shame. There are people who skinny shame. So much shame. body shaming going on right now. It's yes, horrible. like it's so hateful. Don't hate people. Please don't hate. Yeah. I did have. I was going with the point there. There's a lot of there's a lot of people that are body shaming, but the difference you know, is, I'm I'm happy with who I am. I'm confident with my body. You know, I've gained a lot of confidence over the years, but the biggest issue is I love myself. You know, what's so horrible about the body shaming thing is that it comes from people who aren't happy with themselves and they're putting it back out there to other people. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, you get back what you give in a way. And mm -hmm. also like people think, oh, misery loves company. They can't be happy. So they're going to make everybody else unhappy. Like they think they're going to hurt somebody else because <sighs> it's going to make them feel better. It's not going to make you feel better. It's not going to make your life better. Don't be a bully. You gained and then you lost. Yeah, I gained a little, I gained a lot. I lost a little and then I gained back again because my boyfriend actually met me when I was a little bit thinner and I've gained quite a bit. I don't know exactly, but I've gained quite a bit of weight since we started dating and he was wonderful and he wanted to pay for everything and he wanted to buy me weight. Yes, it was happy weight, but he wanted to buy me desserts and everything like that, and it's all his fault. <laughs> yep, that's what happened to my parents. All happy weight. It's, it's, I, it, no, I tell you, it's it was happy, love weight. It, it was happy weight, and because, you know, he was spoiling me, and he was, you know, wanted to buy me dinner, and I said, oh, no, I don't need dessert, but he wanted to make sure that, you know, he showed that, you know, he cared about me and everything like that, and so he wanted to, you know, make sure. Food is the way to the heart, people. It is. Mm -hmm. You want to make someone Especially happy? when you want a heart attack. <laughs> Damn, that's deep. Never thought of it that way. Food is the way to the heart, not only, you know, you know, what do you call Make a man happy mm -hmm. through his stomach, right? Yeah, what's that saying? Um, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Yes! And also to give him heart disease and heart attacks. And dude, I, you just totally blew my mind right now. No, but now he's like being really supportive and trying to help me lose weight. He doesn't push me though. It's not like you're fat and not ugly and I hate you. Ooh, well, if he did that, I oh. would suck him. Well, there's a lot of guys that are like really hateful like that. I dated mm -hmm. a guy that really insisted on me losing weight and that's actually when I did lose weight, but I was very miserable and I was very unhappy. Even though I'm not the weight I want to be, I'm really happy right now because mm -hmm. I have a lot of support and I have somebody who loves I have somebody who loves me for who I am. And even though we've gained, he's gained, uh, I've gained weight, he says he loves me more now than ever and it's not just because of my weight it's because that our relationship has gone deeper and love grows mm -hmm. and I, I think it helps that you know you love yourself and you, it has you're to start with me him I always loved him but there was always a part of me that at one point was so self-loathing that it like how could he love me yeah how could he love me so it really prevented our relationship once I started loving myself our relationship got so much better and it's not that it was bad it's just that it got better and that's because you can't really truly love somebody else the way that they need to be loved or you can't believe that they love you until you the love way you yourself. until you love yourself because yeah. until you understand that you deserve love you can't really accept it because it took me a while to realize that you know, I was always, I was always told I you can't love other people until you love yourself. Yeah, I think, and I never really understood that because I always thought that if somebody loved me, it would make everything okay. Right. It doesn't. It helps, and it's wonderful being loved by somebody, especially yeah, somebody is. who is very deserving of you, and you know, somebody that you're good to as well. You need to be good to each other. It's not just about one person. Everybody yeah. always talks about, I want somebody that's good to me. It's like, well, you need to be good to them too. Mm -hmm. A relationship, like weight loss. <laughs> Is a hundred percent each way. Everything that you want in life is a hundred percent. Like if you don't, you know, like where I struggled a lot was in school when I was in high school and even in college, you know, I wouldn't give my a hundred percent because I wasn't happy with the way things were going in my life. So I struggled because of that. I almost didn't graduate high school and I dropped out of college and I went into, you know, fast food. That was my first job. I mean, I'm still in it. But it's a different one that pays more. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really though, like once I realized what I wanted, because I never really knew what I wanted, but now I realize what I want with life and I'm pushing for it 100%. You know, I'm taking all the steps, I'm not slacking, and I'm going to make sure that I get what I want and that's how it is with everything. 
with weight loss, with relationships, with your own happiness. No, and, and you know, I'm as happy as I've been in my life. I mean, I'm glad that we're hanging out a little bit more, kind yes. of. And, you know, I feel like for once I have, you know, I'm having a really good social life, which, you know, in the past, I think I wasn't around such good people. And you need to take that poison out of your life. That's I feel like, you know, if I feel like a lot of people hold on to things and people that aren't good for them. I feel like that's what mm -hmm. drives you down and they have a negative outlook on life. Mm -hmm. And I feel sad for them because you have to, you don't have to put on rose colored glasses. It's not the same thing as having a positive outlook. A positive outlook does not mean that you're being blind to other things. It means that you see everything, but you choose to be positive and optimistic about it and look towards the future and like... You can't just keep looking at the future and say this is going to be horrible because otherwise, well, <laughs> the world is going to be horrible. Yeah. I mean, as my dad says, seeing the trees through the forest. You got to see the trees through the forest or you're not going to You got to see the forest through the trees. No, the trees through the forest. Are you sure? I thought it was the other way around. I've heard it both ways. Um, either way, same either way. meaning. No, but you know, I'm really happy right now because I do have a job I enjoy and you know, even if it's not your dream job, if you're happy in it, so many people are not happy in their jobs, and I haven't been before, um, not long term anyway, mm -hmm. but at this point I'm happy, it is a new, still a new job, um, but I also have other goals for myself as a fallback, and we'll see how that goes. I kind of take things step by step because I think sometimes it's good to plan for the future, but I think if you get too caught up in certain plans and they don't work out, yeah. it's really heartbreaking. And not saying that you shouldn't make plan long term plans because it would be heartbreaking well, if yeah. they didn't happen. You gotta chase your dreams, you know. You gotta yeah. do what you wanna do. But you know, I mean, for me, I'm not 100 percent on my future, and it's kind of like let's see how it goes. And I've just been really optimistic and having good thoughts, That's and good. you know, I've been around good people, surrounding yourself with good, you know, and and also other people who share your outlook. If you're a positive person, it's really horrible being around people who. Don't believe. Ugh. It's so annoying being around <laughs> negative people. Well, like, okay, negative Nancy, go back in your cave. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's either like really annoying or it's sad or it just kind of drags you down. It, it, it brings it really down your eyes. Oh my gosh. I remember Don't... I was in depression like halfway through high school. I was just depressed because of the people I was hanging around with. You know, I didn't have anything in common with them. If I did, it was something that didn't really matter to me. And it was just, it was horrible. I was, I found myself a loner. My, my first two years of high school and it sucked yeah and it's really not okay i mean I, I mean if that's how you feel also i feel like i feel like i don't know it's kind of hard like if you're if you're a person with a negative outlook because i can't really speak for that because people with negative outlooks are probably going to find each other really but mm, not always but not sometimes always. not always but they, but, they but, tend to cling to the happy people because that's what they want well that's what they want but or they don't. they're jealous and they want to bring them down no but um I mean, I've been around people where, you know, I try to fix them or make them happy or whatever, but some people just choose. It's almost like a choice. They choose not to be happy. It and, is. And it is a choice because even if you don't always know you're consciously making it, there's a time where I was really depressed and I didn't know that I was scared of happiness because we tend to cling to the things that are familiar. And if happiness yes. isn't familiar to you, it can be out of your comfort zone, even though that's what you really want, but you don't always work towards it. And it's yeah. really hard that way. And then there's worry of change. Oh my god, fear of change, yeah. Yes, I, I have such a big fear of change. I'm, I I'm trying to get over it still. Yeah, I almost didn't start doing YouTube because I was thinking, everything is really good right now. I'm really happy. I have a wonderful family that is there for me. I have friends, really good friends. I have good people around me. I have an amazing boyfriend whom I love very much. I have a good job. You know, I everything has been going really good. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of like, you know, why not share your happiness? Yeah, it was kind of one thing that things that, you know, if it's broke, don't fix it. So I was kind of hesitant about putting myself on YouTube and bringing um, the criticism forward because that's going to happen anyway. Criticize me all you want, people, because I don't care. Well, I'm the one that's going to have to read the comments. Happiness is a journey. It is. Every, it's, everybody, it's looks at, everybody looks at it as a de destination, I think, but I think it's a journey. And a lot of... I, I think I'm still on my way. Um, I don't think this is the be-all, end-all. This isn't as happy as I'm going to be. I'm very happy. And I think I'm the happiest I possibly have ever been in my life. I'm very content and happy and feel very safe and everything right now. But, yeah, we're in a good place. But that doesn't mean that, you know, we can't keep pushing ourselves and work to be more. It is a journey. You have mm -hmm. to keep working at it. Yeah. And not just working at being happy. I think it's about um, working at being good and being a good person 
and doing your best and everything like that. Because I think that if you're a good person, you're going to receive good things. It's not just about karma. It just is how people respond to you. And not just people, but, it's I don't you, know, it's life. It's how you get blessed. Yeah. You know? Here with just slap my thigh. <laughs> <laughs> <Just slap it. laughs> Ain't nothing more real than just slapping the thigh. Yeah. <laughs> and Gum and Gum be like, <laughs> I've never done this with anybody else. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Stop. I'm making myself for the faces. <laughs> I, I love, love myself so much. <laughs> I love me because I'm me. I'm so special. I, just, I yes. I love me. I'm just so perfect. <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> it's not this kind of show. Um, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> oh, we're gonna. I haven't talked about any issues. Hey, listen.